the Washington establishment has failed us over and over and over again. It's time for a new generation of leadership to rediscover fiscal responsibility, secure our border, and strengthen our country, our pride, and our purpose. That right there is former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley in a new campaign ad after officially announcing her run for president. Haley becomes the first Republican to announce her bid, among many who appear hesitant to follow Donald Trump into the race. She's also the first woman of color for a GOP nomination. We're ready, ready to move past the stale ideas and faded names of the past. And we are more than ready for a new generation to lead us into the future. Painting against her old boss, former President Donald Trump. She served as U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations during his administration. Of course, we knew that. And joining us now to talk more about Nikki Haley's presidential campaign launch, we are joined by political consultant John Dadian. John, thanks for joining us tonight. I mean, this is kind of a the first step, it seems, in what was expected to be a pretty crowded field. What is your initial reaction here, and did it surprise you? We're off and running. Uh, yeah, it didn't surprise me. I mean, she clearly has a good resume. Uh, for this without a doubt. But th th the big question is, can she win? And th we have a very recent example from 2016. Jeb Bush was considered a front runner. He had $100 million. Give me $100 million in the campaign, I'll make you president. And he was one of the first to fold. So I'm going to quote, I'm going to paraphrase Sun Tzu. Any campaign can be won, any campaign can be lost. That's a good point to make. Everybody kind of coming in on an even playing field. Sometimes the money doesn't make the difference. Let's talk about the second point that you were talking to me about and what you've seen as reaction uh, from her announcement. What are you seeing and, and did it surprise you there? I've been around for almost 40 years, and this is 2023. I was amazed. The left is coming out vicious. We knew they were going to attack her. They're going to attack every Republican. They questioned her religion. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought in this country you can be feel, feel free to practice whatever religion you want. They questioned her ethnicity, saying, is she Indian ethnicity or white? Why would you say that about anybody? So they're coming after, after with both daggers. Now, of course, when somebody attacks you, that might mean they're afraid of you. I was going to say, sometimes the loudest marks mean, That's you know. That's exactly right. When it comes to what we see next, these next steps, do you think other people, is this going to kind of open the floodgates, so to speak, and, and the GOP people jumping on that bandwagon who maybe were waiting to not be the first after Trump? I'm not sure if it'll open the floodgates. However, I think a lot of people forget this. My analysis is the more Republicans they, they get into the primary, the more it helps Trump because he's got that real solid, hardcore uh, base, et cetera. If it's just uh, Donald Trump against maybe one big name, whether it be DeSantis or Haley, whatever, then Trump is not necessarily going to get it. But I think he's looking pretty good the more candidates that get in. So let's talk about what's next for Nikki Haley specifically. What do you think she has to do now to get ahead before maybe those big names, like you said, DeSantis, uh, potentially put their names in? Quite honestly, I watched the whole speech. I think she needs a better theme. Mm. Um, she, she said several things. She came out with this platform of term limits for Congress. Well, that would take a constitutional amendment. Uh, so that's kind of pie in the sky. But here, here's my observation. She did a combination of using some of Ronald Reagan's themes and actually using even John F. Kennedy's themes. John F. Kennedy made a famous quote. He said, uh, people of this of this century, because it was kind of a slam against Dwight Eisenhower. Mm. She did the same thing. She also came out with a proposal about anybody over a certain age, maybe they need a certain test to run for president, et cetera. Mm -hmm. That was, in one swoop, she bashed both Biden and her former boss, Donald Trump. I was going to say, that was certainly, I think at one point she said, America is not in its is not past its prime, but our leaders are. That was certainly something she honed down on uh, in that speech multiple times. Anything else you're taking away from this? What can people expect in the coming days and weeks? Well, I do think you're going to see other candidates uh, get into it. Everybody talks about DeSantis, but I got to tell you, the interesting, in my opinion, the interesting thing about DeSantis, he's very similar to Trump in many ways. So does that play well? A uh, big name that I'm looking for that I know has done the exploratory but hasn't announced yet is Mike Pompeo. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, former, uh, so we'll, we'll see, uh, et cetera. Uh, I heard Asa Hutchinson from uh, the South is talking about it. So yeah, there's going to be the other names. And so Nikki Haley, she's got a lot going for her. Obviously a woman, obviously uh, uh, ethnicity, et cetera. However, she's got to separate herself from the crowd. Will she be able to do that? I think that's going to be the key to see if she rises. And will she be able to separate herself from Trump, of course, as well? Another one we're going to be watching very closely. John Dadian, we appreciate you coming on, taking the time. 
going to be an interesting presidential campaign season. Good to see you. Thank Good you. Good to see you. Thanks so much. All right, Logan Wilson, things back over to you.